Hi there. Welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Mufaro Mazodze and in today's video I'll be talking about five tips on how to pass CTA at UNISA. Now if you're not doing your CTA at UNISA, that is absolutely fine. It's not a problem. You can still watch this video. I believe it will still be very helpful to you. Before I go into my five tips, I wanted to give a short background story on my journey so far. I did my undergrad at Stellenbosch University and I actually went from failing my final year, I failed two modules in my final year, to passing my CTA first time around with no subs. What I would say about failing two modules in my undergrad, I would say it was a very traumatic experience. However, it was a blessing in disguise because I actually had a very good understanding of my undergraduate work before I went on to CTA. This brings me to tip number one. Mind your study method, okay? Just like I noticed from repeating my final year in undergrad, I noticed that my study method was not working for me. Now with CTA, one of the biggest problems is that the workload is just a lot. It's extreme um, amounts of work. It's a lot of work because you're majoring in taxation, auditing, financial accounting, and management accounting. You're expected to have thorough knowledge of these areas and you're expected to remember everything you did in undergrad as well as and at an advanced level. The tip number one is basically work smart and not necessarily hard. The textbook. I do not recommend that you spend too much time um, studying from your textbooks. Um, remember the usual study method that I wanted to do was I wanted to go through all my notes and all the sections in the, in, the, in the textbook. After the textbook, I go on to my act. After the act, I go on to practicing questions. Now what would normally happen is that I would get tired by the time it comes to practicing questions. So I would practice questions when it's too late. You know, practice questions, practice questions is what you want to do. Trust me, there's nothing in the textbook that can help you pass CTA. Yes, the textbook can help you understand concepts, but that is all it can do. That is as far as a textbook can do for you. So um, I actually did CTA level one, then I did CTA level two, which is another thing I would recommend because then CTA level two was much more easier after doing CTA level one. However, CTA level one is in fact more difficult than CTA level 2 because I remember that was my first um, experience with CTA and it was overwhelming it's difficult you write five tests in one day okay and they're all like one hour 15 minutes each so I think with CTA the fatigue burning out getting tired those are real issues and you need to find ways around that and in this video I'll go more into detail about how I manage that okay now Tip number two. Now, how to pass CTA tip number two that I can give you is that the ACT, the IFRA standards, the auditing standards, IS, um, and your tax act, your tax act of 1962 or 63, I think, um, that one is very, very important. Those books must be your best friend. It is much better to understand those because remember at CTA, well, when you're studying um, CTA at UNISA, they only allow um, students to bring in, to start using their act and to bring them into the exam at CTA level. Um, because I studied Stellenbosch, we were allowed to take our acts into the um, tests and exams from second year. So that's a bit of a, a big difference and a big adjustment. Um, some people struggle to see with some people struggle um, when it comes to how to use your act but if you can be best friends with your act it really comes to your advantage that means that you have less um, information to cram unnecessarily you don't need to cram th um, things that are going to be um, with you in the test or exam of course um, it helps to know where to find certain sections you might need when it comes to your test or exam but knowing the act page by not page by page but knowing the sections that are important to you um, it really comes in handy especially with financial accounting and um, taxation very 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 important how to pass the TA tip number three you are a human being you're not a robot okay and I believe it's so important to keep a good balance between work 
and rest. Now, a lot of people who have done CTA at UNISA have also had to do it at the same time while they were doing their articles and they say that they don't recommend it. I didn't do it that way. I haven't started my articles yet. And I believe that it's also like a blessing in disguise because even though I might not have an income, I managed to focus more on my studies and even then it was still demanding like cta demands your undivided attention so if you can handle it go for it okay we don't all have the same um brain capacity we're not all the same some people can handle a little more than others so just it's all about knowing yourself i know that i would put my mental health first and when i got tired for instance when you're studying cta at unisa there is four tests now you can write test one and test two if you get 60 percent you already have prayed and you can write your exam okay if you have written test three and you've made prayed you've made um 40 percent you've got exam entrance okay that means that you don't need to write um test four you could write it you have to write it because it's work that you eventually need to do in order to pass your exams but i would reach burnout at this point because test three between test three and test four there's usually like very little space so what i would do is i would only write a test if i need it to make um exam entrance um this really helped me because i remember like last year i passed my cta level two and i said i'm not gonna write i think it was auditing yes i was like i'm not gonna write all the time i write the other four when i was writing the fourth test i literally like gave up in the middle not because i couldn't do it but i was just extremely tired so test four i, I would say just like write one or two tests the ones you need to make prayer don't give yourself pressure and write all of them um as long as you made prayer honestly you don't have to write test four but you have to write because you have to study you have to continuously study and i think why i give this as a tip is because you're gonna have you i think i would say before the exam right so there's test four then there is the exam right so by the time you reach the exam you won't be too tired so that's why i say don't necessarily give yourself pressure to write test four if you don't need to how to pass cta tip number four some of it i already mentioned it in tip number three but i have my one my one good friend once gave me some really good advice the day before your test or exam stop studying at 6 p.m just stop studying because the day you write your test you need a really fresh a clear mind a well-rested mind and if you study until midnight and you're writing at 8 a.m you're going to be so fatigued even though you know your work you might struggle to get the right marks and to re get the, the 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 you might struggle even though you know your work if you're tired sometimes you just your brain shuts down so in order to avoid that stop studying at 6 p.m the day before and you're gonna have I've, I've practiced this in every single test and exam i was saying i have practiced this and it's been working well for me to be honest because you know fatigue is the one thing we deal with like i said we write five tests in one day for me that was the biggest adjustment when i wrote um when i did my cta level one like it's intense it's it's really intense and i think um cta is not necessarily difficult work it's just a lot of work it's difficult but it's not difficult impossible right um it's doable but we really struggle with going through all the syllabus the whole syllabus and also the level of knowledge you're expected to know everything like not just like surface but deep um and then tip number five how to pass cta tip number five this tip is just um, get into the Facebook group, okay? There is a lot of admin things. The dates change a lot when you're studying CTA at UNISA. You all of a sudden hear, like, I remember last year, I was just telling a friend, like, last year, like, a few days before my exam, I'm on the Facebook group and I'm hearing we need to download an invigilator app. I'm like, sure, I'm so busy studying and preparing for my exam that I don't have actually time to log on to my emails or my, my UNISA. I know that's bad, but, you know, we get so so focused we get so focused and we forget that we also have to um do our admin open our emails so being in the facebook group it can be overwhelming or a bit toxic but it's good to keep you updated on what's happening you know you might hear of um like especially 
we're in a pandemic things are changing so it's totally understandable definitely i recommend you to join the whatsapp group i mean the facebook group yeah the whatsapp groups are also helpful but they're not um as important as the facebook group i'll leave a link to the facebook group in my description box or in the comments section below if you're not in the facebook group for um unisa city level one and two i think that's what it's called <laughs> as a bonus tip um take my advice with a pinch of salt one man's poison is another man's medicine okay the saying goes like something like that um i'm obviously not a professional but really i'm just giving you tips that help me and pray okay we're not all religious but i'm religious and i prayed um if i got overwhelmed i would play some hillsong music i'll link that music in the description box as well um yeah the one that goes like spirit lead me like that song just heals me okay side note like that song just heals any anxiety because there's a lot of anxiety especially when there's not enough money to repeat modules and getting a sub is the most biggest inconvenience like especially if you're studying with uh, unisa they have a lot of students so it's understandable that marking takes very very long and um if you get a SAP now, it's going to delay a lot of things for you. You might not be able to register for ITC. You might not be able to, you'll know, like, do I study for ITC? Do I do I wait? Do I study for test one? You know, it's, it's a big inconvenience. And, you know, when you're studying with UNISA, you just want to pass it once off, trust me. <laughs> um, so there's a lot of anxiety. That's why I said, yeah, praying works for me. Just remember to put your mental health first. Um, your mental health is really, really, really important. If you're feeling anxious, stressed, overwhelmed, no interest that is it for my tips today I have made actually um, a lot of videos on management accounting that was my highest mark so yeah I'm <clears throat> quite comfortable with that module as well as groups but like groups last year yo if anyone wrote um, FAC 4864 yes I think that's what it's called our modules are like AUE 4862 most of them end in 4862 except for the two facts when you're studying financial accounting at unisa they split the facts into two and yeah one is just the normal ISs and the ifris and the other one is mainly group statements so yeah that is it for today's video guys um leave a comment in the comment section let me know what you think and if you have other tips put them in the comment section i might have forgotten to mention something and i'll link my videos on management accounting on mac in my video or in the and, and in the description box and all the other videos i made that can actually be helpful like um with some of the work um i love you for watching please don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel it's free to subscribe and thank you for watching i hope this uh, video was helpful bye